Hi folks, I'm Ian Baker, the product specialist with Camping World. Today we're going to talk a little bit about travel trailers and how to select the perfect one to meet the needs of you and your family. So what we're going to do is go through a couple different options and considerations to help you narrow down that search and find the perfect unit. The first thing you need to decide is what you plan on towing with. Do you keep your current vehicle or buy a new one? In order to help in this decision, you probably want to find out if your current vehicle can tow the trailer you're interested in. To figure this out, there's a couple different factors. The first one is going to be tow capacity. You can generally find this in your owner's manual or visit rv.campingworld.com slash tow guide and enter either your VIN number or year, make, model, and trim package to find max tow capacity. The other piece of information you will need is the GVWR of the tow vehicle. That stands for gross vehicle weight rating. That one is much easier to find as it is right here in the door jam on most of your vehicles. So we figured out what information you need on your tow vehicle. What about your travel trailer? There's two big pieces of information you're going to need to know. The shipping weight, also known as the dry weight, and the GVWR. Your shipping weight you can get from either the manufacturer or the dealer you bought it from. The GVWR will be on a sticker right here on the outside. What you want to do is take that shipping weight, compare it to the tow capacity of your vehicle, and account for the stuff you plan on putting in it. Things you'll have to consider. The weight of your battery, the propane, as well as any water that you plan on traveling with in your fresh water tank, and again, everything that you pack inside the camper. Most people are somewhere between 500 to 1,000 pounds of stuff. So again, take your shipping or dry weight, add in the weight of everything you add on here, make sure it is under the tow capacity of your tow vehicle and under the GVWR of the trailer itself. Now that we've figured out what you can tow, it's time to narrow down the search a little bit further and talk a little bit about construction. So we're gonna go with your sidewall construction and talk about the two different types and the major differences. The first one is going to be your traditional or conventional style of construction, which will have aluminum siding, wood framing, and will have your rolled, generally fiberglass insulation. The other option will be your fiberglass exterior. This one has two different styles or methods of construction. One will be what they call in the industry a hung glass wall, which is a very similar to construction to traditional. It still has your wood frame and your rolled insulation, but rather than your aluminum exterior has fiberglass exterior. The other option is a laminated product. That one will have a fiberglass exterior, will have aluminum structure and styrofoam insulation. There are advantages to both methods of construction. While your fiberglass tends to be a little more aesthetically pleasing and is easier to clean, your traditional is generally more cost effective and is easier to repair. So we've narrowed down what you can tow as well as what kind of exterior you prefer. Now we get into probably the most complicated part, which is the floor plan. This is where the most variants lie and where you really wanna to try to find one that works perfect for you. So where do you start? I generally try to ask people, how many people do you plan on sleeping in the travel trailer on a regular basis? If your answer is four or more, most people go with either a bunk model or a toy hauler with a rear queen drop-down bed. The reason being, although the dinettes and the couches in most RVs do make up into beds, if you're doing it day in and day out, some people tend to find it a little tedious. With the bunks or the drop-down queen, you can make the bed and leave it, and it is good the entire time you are camping. So, what kind of bunk models are there? Let's go over a couple different options. The first style of bunk model travel trailer I wanna talk about is a rear corner bunk unit. These ones right next to me are commonly referred to as a double over double because they are double wide. Because they're larger, they also tend to have higher weight capacities, meaning they can usually accommodate adults. As you'll notice, this one is also on the camp side of the RV or the door side. The reason that's great is outside, you tend to have storage underneath the bunk here or possibly an outside kitchen. So if that's something that you're looking for, you will probably want the bunks on the camp side. If, however, you maybe want kids to be able to come right into the bathroom without trapes and dirt all the way through the camper, then you'll want the bunks on the other side because the bunks in the bathroom will switch places. When the bathroom's on the camp side, they usually put a door there for exactly that reason. Everyone can come in, do their business, and head back out without making a mess of your RV. 
Another option that is available is what's commonly known as a bunk room or a bunk house. Generally, it's in the back of the travel trailer and you get an actual separate space for the kids where there's usually about three to four bunks. Again, there are multiple setups in the way that this can be laid out. A very common one is what we have right here, where you will have a slide out with a foldable top bunk and a sofa underneath. On the other side, you have a raised bunk. The reason this is raised up is outside of here, you have a big outside kitchen. Some of these floor plans also have access into the bathroom. So if you want to be able to have the outside kitchen and the bathroom access, you may have to look at a bunk house rather than a rear corner bunk model. Another option that is often overlooked is a toy hauler. A lot of times you have excellent sleeping capacity in a garage. As you'll notice, this one has a much more residential feel and there's different things you can do to kind of make it feel a little more homey. You'll also see this one is equipped with the Happy Jack power bed so you can drop this queen bed down and you have two rollover sofas. You essentially have two queen beds back here, meaning you can sleep for adults. That's generally better than you'll get in a lot of bunk models. Now, if you mainly only plan on having two people sleep in your RV and just need some extra space for additional guests that may come once or twice a year, maybe a little bit more than that, you have several options available to you as well. With a travel trailer, we have basically three main types for what they call a couple's coach. You have a rear bath, a rear kitchen, and a rear living. Let's take a quick look at all those. A rear bath can be a great option, especially if you plan on bringing a lot of clothes. Many rear baths are not only large like this one, giving you plenty of space to maneuver and get changed, but a lot of times they also have great additional storage, giving you a lot of needed wardrobe space. A rear living floor plan tends to put the emphasis on relaxation, comfort, and entertainment space in the back of the RV. You have several different configurations. You may have theater seating directly across from a TV with a big sofa in the back, or you may have something like we're in currently, where you have a couple rockers here in the back of the coach. All of them, however, do try to provide a lot of comfort in the back, again, so you can sit back and relax. Another big benefit oftentimes is you get a large rear picture window. So if you have a beautiful view out the back, these floor plans generally let you enjoy that. If you love to cook and you want to do so in your RV, then a rear kitchen just may be for you. These ones tend to maximize countertop space, giving you a lot of different prep area. And they also usually have a lot of storage as well. You can see this one has plenty of drawers in here and storage all the way across the top. So again, if you want to be that master chef while you're camping, check out a rear kitchen. When you're looking at different floor plans, one of the things you will have to consider are whether or not you want slide outs. Slide outs are great because they add so much space inside and it allows for some unique things. For example, in this RV, where we have two opposing slide outs, it allows for a center island in your kitchen. There are some downsides of slides as well though. If you have one on your campsite, sometimes that will impede your campsite. You won't get quite as much awning coverage. Also, depending on where the slide is located and how it is set up, when you're stopped, you may not have access to your fridge or to your bathroom. So it is something you'll wanna consider and while most people do go with slides, they're not necessarily for everyone. So we've discussed weight, sidewall construction, floor plan of the unit, and whether or not you want slides. The last thing you need to think about are some of the special considerations which are based upon your specific usage. If you plan on camping somewhere where it's hot a lot, second AC might be something you look for. Or conversely, maybe you want to do cold weather camping. You probably want something that's four season capable. Residential fridge may be up your alley, possibly a U dinette. There are a lot of other little things that again, you'll want to think about before you make that final decision. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Hopefully this video showed you some of the different options that are available in travel trailers and helped narrow it down so you can find the type of travel trailer that'll work best for your needs. For more in-depth information, make sure you check out our RV reviews on YouTube for a complete walkthrough. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.